Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and in this video we are going to be unboxing, installing, and testing the Arctic Freezer 36 ARGB Black. Now I'm actually kind of excited to test this one out just because it's a fair amount more compact than some of the other air coolers that I've tested. It's only a single tower but it does have two fans attached to it and it's rated to cool roughly 219 watts I believe. And I'll be testing it on my 7900X, which coincidentally pulls around 220, 225 watts. So I'll be interested to see how well it can cool that CPU. So let's unbox and take a look at it. Okay, so the tower comes standalone. The uh, the fans come individually boxed inside and they're a little more difficult to get off. Okay, so we got one fan here, one fan here, and so this does uh, work for AM4, AM5, LGA 1700 and LGA 1851. Uh, I'm assuming this might have the same problem as like the Arctic Liquid Freezer uh, 3 where the contact plate for the LGA 1851, um, they actually came out with a new one for that, um, uh, for that CPU socket just because the hotspot on the CPU uh, changed relative to the LGA 1700. So where this one is the same one as the 1700, it might not perform as well um, without the new bracket. And what else? And then we have uh, the rest of the mounting hardware for LGA, or sorry, for AM4 and AM5. All right, so. Take a look here, unbox the fans. There we go, so we have two uh, fans right here and they are going in the same direction. Okay, I thought one of them might be reversed, but they that's not the case. They are both going uh, in the same direction and pushing air through from uh, the front here and out the back. And we have a little box that's in the way right here and there's nothing in it. All right, so let's get this here, here, and here so everyone can see everything. So I'll be testing this. It's on a 7900X, so it will be going on an AM5 uh, CPU and motherboard. So, yeah, just to quickly go over some of the things in here. This is a, the fans go from 200 to 2000 RPM. Uh, they're a four pin. PWM, so you can control the fan speed. Uh, they have fluid dynamic bearings, so that means that it should run smoother, quieter, and less heat means the fan should last longer. They are a RGB as well and should be, so we have the four pin there, and you can daisy chain them together. And then it's also the RGB connector uh, right there. And you can daisy chain everything together as well. This is a has four six millimeter heat pipes. It's you know single fin stack as you can see, uh, or a single tower. So it has 59 four or 0.4 millimeter aluminum fins. It has copper heat pipes, copper base plate. Weighs roughly 917 grams, so just a little over two pounds. And one of the things that I really like about this cooler is that instead of having to use those dinky little paper clip style fan clips, these should just clip on and hold in place with the screws in the back. So these should just snap together. Yeah, they just snap on. Oh, that's nice. 
they just snap on into place like that. No meddling or fiddling around with those little uh, flimsy little metal clips, and they just and it just pops off. So that is yeah, fantastic. I love that. I hate messing around with those little clips. Uh, so we got a little bit of plastic right there. That looks really nice right there from a aesthetic point of view. I like the matte black finish of the uh, uh, of the tower. Looks really nice. It'll look really good in an all black build. And don't forget to take off the uh, plastic uh, tab protecting the uh, copper heat uh, base plate right there. So let's go ahead and install it on my 7900X. I'm going to need a couple of things first. So I'm going to have these two brackets. All right, so based on the instructions, it's not the screws that are in the package that have the smaller thread at the bottom. It's the longer screws that are floating around that have the thread going the whole length of the screw. That's the one that we're going to be mounting to AM5. So this must be the one that is used to, uh, does not label it on there, but it's used to mount the contact frame here on an LGA 1700 or 1851 socket. As well, the supplies to hex wrench that they have here, that is for uh, removing the contact plate off the LGA 1700 and LGA 1851 socket. So what we'll need are thermal paste, the four risers and the four screws that are in the bag. When it comes to the brackets, there's nothing indicating left or right on here, but these are Everything is identical, so it's not going to matter if you have them uh, on the left or the right, if you get that mixed up. What you want to make sure, though, is that the they're facing outside, like I have uh, shown right here. So they're going to mount like this, not like this. Another thing before we start getting into, so looking at the, um, the tower, the way it, these have to be aligned a specific way. So you're going to want the air flowing from the RAM out through the back of your PC. So the way that's going to mount is air intake is coming through this side and it's going to be going out the back here. So you're going to want the Arctic symbol facing uh, away from where the air is going to be going. So it's coming in through the Arctic symbol here. The fan is going to push it through and come out. So the screws on these are mounted in different places so that the screws that are on the back here, that is going to go on the front. And then the other one where the screws are on the same size as the Arctic symbol, that is going to go on the back. So the first thing I have to do is remove the existing mounting bracket that came with your motherboard. Then we're going to need these plastic risers. And now we're going to mount the brackets. Now when tightening this, go snug, not too tight. You don't want to strip anything or put too much pressure on the actual motherboard. Now for the um, for Ryzen CPU, I find you're good just putting a small P-sized dot in the middle and it'll spread evenly across since it's almost perfect square with a um, Intel CPU, I find you need to do more of a line to get it spread out evenly. So that's really about as much as you need. Now we just need to line the screws up. 
and tighten a little bit on each side. So that side is connected. It's snug. Now attaching the fans. I just kind of push in nice and easy like that. And you have lots of room for your RAM clearance, whereas normally with a dual tower CPU cooler, there is going to be a notch in one of the uh, towers, and you might have to raise your fan a little bit depending on how high your RAM is. There we go. Now we're just going to daisy chain these together. Okay. Now for your fan hitter, I have one here labeled CPU fan. That's the one I'm going to use. Now we can just tuck this in behind right there and we'll daisy chain the daisy chain the ARGB as well and then the ARGB fan header is going to look similar to this it's going to have uh, two pins, a space, and then another pin. And on this Gigabyte board, it's labeled GDV. If you see a four pin uh, RGB header, that's for RGB, not ARGB. So before we actually get into the results of the testing, I just want you to keep in mind that with pretty much any CPU uh, testing that's done, it's not going to, those results aren't going to transfer over to other socket types that pull similar amount of wattage. So with the 7900X pulling about 220 watts, uh, I find this CPU actually runs hotter than a 5900X pulling a similar amount of wattage. And then if you were to go to an LGA 1700, you're going to get different results there as well. So just keep in mind that what you're going to see with the 7900X might not transfer over with the CPU that you're actually going to be using. So with that out of the way, so the Freezer 36 actually is a fairly quiet CPU cooler. It beats out the Thermalrite Phantom Spirit Evo. Uh, this came in at 43 decibels and it even beats out the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 360, which came in at 44 decibels. Looking at uh, all cores, 100% fan speed, the Arctic Freezer 36 actually had trouble trying to cool the 7900X. The temperature peaked um, for the main sensor at 96 or at 93.9 uh, degrees, and the hot spot on uh, die one came in at 96 degrees, which is substantially higher than the Phantom Spirit Evo. And of course, um, it's quite a bit higher than the other um, water coolers that I tried, the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 360 and the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 420. So the single tower cooler does seem to have a little bit of trouble trying to cool um, uh, really high temperatures with the 7900X is. If you plan on using this for productivity you might not want to use this cooler with it because you'll probably end up being a thermal throttled and you won't be able to get max performance uh, max performance out of your CPU and operating at these high temperatures high temps is like the enemy of any kind of computer component it will degrade over time even though these are meant to run at 95 degrees Celsius it I would not recommend having any kind of long-term uh, utilization where you're going to be hitting those temps on a regular basis. Disabling the second, um, so the 7900X has two six core um, chiplets on it, disabling the second one and just using the main one which actually operates at a higher temperature. It has a higher peak speed that it reaches. The 
Arctic Freezer 36 actually comes in a little bit lower than at 100% or like with all cores being utilized. So it comes in at 88.2 degrees for the main sensor with a hotspot of 90.4. Uh, which is kind of in the ballpark of the Thermorite um, Phantom Spirit Evo, except for the main sensor is a few degrees, about two and a half degrees lower. And it's not even in the same ballpark as the liquid coolers. So air cooling, as you can see, does not compete with water cooling, especially at the, um, these higher temperatures. So since the data with the 12 cores um, being used and the 6 cores being used were still so showing relatively high temperatures, I decided to try it out uh, gaming as well. So I tested it out on Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Um, surprisingly, it was using about 50%, over 50% CPU, CPU utilization. Uh, pulling in around 135 watts which is quite a bit and it was able to maintain a temperature of 77 degrees which is a fair amount better than just testing out the uh, six cores in a Cinebench R23. So based on that for gaming this CPU cooler easily handles the 7900X um, and the power that it uh, puts out this is just one game. Other games are going to pull more or less power, so you're going to have different temperatures depending on the game that you're playing. But based on these results, it's uh, decent enough performance for gaming, not the best performance for productivity where it's engaging all 12 cores. So my recommendation would be to use this CPU cooler in something like a using this generation of CPUs would be like the 7700X or lower, uh, which would be an 8 core um, 16 thread CPU. The 12 cores just pulls too much power and it has trouble keeping it under, well, couldn't even keep it under the 95 degree mark because that hotspot was hitting 96 degrees. Anyway, if you found this video helpful, I would definitely appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel, like the video, and leave a comment down below.